Hello everyone. Welcome back to our new video. Today, we're delving into Revelation 9 to explore a fascinating prophecy involving the drying up of the Euphrates River and the appearance of four angels. Let's start by setting the stage with Revelation 9, 14, 16. And the sixth angel sounded. And I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar which is before God saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet, Loose the four angels which are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, which were prepared for an hour, and a day, and a month, and a year, for to slay the third part of men. And the number of the army of the horsemen were two hundred thousand thousand, and I heard the number of them. This passage unveils a significant prophecy involving the Euphrates River and the release of four angels, setting the scene for profound events to unfold. Before we delve into the prophecy, let's understand the importance of the Euphrates River in biblical history. This ancient river holds symbolic value in various scriptures, often representing boundaries and the flow of human history. The Euphrates River is not a newcomer to biblical prophecy. We find it mentioned in Genesis, in the story of the Garden of Eden, and throughout the Old and New Testaments. Its presence is a consistent thread woven through the tapestry of biblical narratives. As we look at the world around us today, we can't help but wonder how the biblical prophecies concerning the Euphrates might be unfolding in our time. What does the future hold for the Euphrates River? Well, in the book of Revelation, on the sixth trumpet judgment of God, the Bible in Revelation chapter 9 tells us that a solitary voice from the four horns of the golden altar which stands before God told an angel of God to release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. And the four angels who had been kept ready for this very hour and day and month and year were released to kill a third of mankind. A few noteworthy points. God has kept these four fallen angels bound for a very specific time in human history. They are to be released only for a specific mission of destruction. But why are these four so unique in the sense that there is only one other creature who is bound at the bottomless pit for a thousand years, and this is the devil. But this happens later on in Revelation 20. But it highlights the severity of these fallen angels. These four angels in the Euphrates are in a separate category to other fallen angels because here is what the Bible tells us about the location of other fallen angels. 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 4 says, For if God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness to be reserved for judgment, so, the other fallen angels who rebelled in heaven were cast down to hell and right now they are in chains awaiting judgment. But what is it about the four angels bound in Euphrates? Why are they kept only for the tribulation and other fallen angels aren't? Well, some have suggested that these angels are the actual representation of what the devil came on this earth to do to kill, steal, and destroy. Hence, why they will only be released at the very end of time. Now, before I go any further, you have to understand that these four satanic angels are like nothing this world has ever seen. Imagine just how bad these evil angels are for God to have them bound at the bottom of the Euphrates River. The sole purpose of these fallen angels is to slay a third of the earth's population. Some Bible commentators speculate that these angels might have been high-ranking angels who were cast out of heaven with Lucifer. 
The Bible tells us that when Lucifer was cast out of heaven, a third of angels fell with him. These four angels at the bottom of the Euphrates are high-ranking fallen angels because of what we're told in Ephesians 6 verse 12. The Bible reads, For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. From this description, here's what we can interpret. The devil has a kingdom, the kingdom of darkness. In this kingdom, there is a structure. There are descending orders of authority, which is principalities or principal spirits. There are evil rulers of darkness, and then spiritual hosts of wickedness, meaning evil spirits. So, what we have to do in these times, well, in times of prophetic significance, we are called to be people of prayer and intercession. Let's lift up the world, our communities, and ourselves in prayer, seeking God's guidance and mercy. As we navigate these times, it's crucial to strengthen our faith and foster a sense of community. Connect with fellow believers, share your insights, and encourage one another. The body of Christ is a source of support and strength during challenging times. In the midst of these prophecies, we find hope and assurance in God's promises. The same God who revealed these events is the one who holds our future. Let's find comfort in His unchanging nature and place our trust in Him. Thank you for joining me on this exploration of Revelation 9 and the prophetic imagery surrounding the Euphrates River. If you found this video insightful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share your thoughts in the comments below.